Welcome back to the Hot Tip Best Daily Pick Show here for Wednesday, December 6th. Back with some more college basketball action here for today. Got a pretty strong slate of games once again here for Wednesday. So we'll jump into all of that here in a second. Quickly, though, before we do, looking back to Tuesday night's card, don't quite have the results for any of these. But as always, check the YouTube community tab, um, as well as the link down in the description to the website to see the full results for all of those. And if you haven't already subscribed over on Dub Club, go get signed up. Take advantage of all the benefits over there. You can get early ad-free access to all of the YouTube uploads. You can get Dub Club notifications every single time that I post my picks. You get my recommended unit size, and you get access to the Discord server, which is a great time over there um you know chopping it up during the games and whatnot so um if you haven't already signed up use code chris3 at checkout to get your first three months for only 19.99 the same price um normally as one month so as always i truly appreciate all you guys who have signed up you help keep the channel alive and without the dub club subscribers none of this would be possible so thank you guys all so much and let's jump into today's show and we start Wednesday's show off from Philly as Loyola, Maryland takes on LaSalle for Loyola, Maryland to come into this game as the 341st overall team in the high tip power ranking. LaSalle is the 179th overall team on the offensive side of things. LaSalle does get the advantage here coming into this game, 149th overall, while Loyola, Maryland is the 310th overall team. Defensively, though, LaSalle is the team with the edge as well. 205th overall, Loyola, Maryland, the 338th overall team here entering this one. And, you know, as far as this LaSalle team has gone, um, has, you know, been fairly strong here to start the season. Obviously, a couple um, of Philly five wins, obviously, to open the season up against Drexel, Penn as well. Um, a triple overtime loss to Temple, which was certainly a tough game. And their only other loss in the season um, against Duke. So, you know, it's a team in LaSalle that has certainly won the games that you would expect them to win. And really outside of that Temple game, there's not any toss up games where they've looked terrible. And, and you know, going to triple overtime in that one certainly were a very, very competitive team and often Offensively speaking, LaSalle has been very, very strong, have done a great job shooting the basketball this season, a 51.9 effective field goal percentage on the year, 35.5% from beyond the arc, and they've really just done a great job dominating in the turnover department. That's one area um, that LaSalle has very much impressed me here this season. And on the other side of things, for Loyola, Maryland, kind of the complete opposite as far as performances go this season. They only have one win on the year, a win against Brown, uh, took overtime in that game, and only a two-point victory there. Now, granted, Granted, they've played some decently tough games, you know, a couple of them anyway, a game against Florida, a game against Missouri as well, but also some losses where it's like, yeah, maybe they should have won, including their most recent game against Delaware State at home, a game that they also took to overtime, but just couldn't quite pull it out. And a lot of the struggles for Loyola Maryland have come just, you know, not shooting the ball well, only a 48.9 effective field goal percentage on the year, and they're only hitting 31.8% from beyond the arc, not to mention how well LaSalle has done in the turnover department. You can't say the same thing about Loyola, Maryland, giving up through the 321st worst team in the country when it comes to just holding on to the basketball. And as far as the model goes for this one, does give a pretty strong edge to LaSalle here. 77.24 points for them. Loyola, Maryland at 62.96, a 14.28 spread in LaSalle's favor here entering this game. And as far as the books have it, we opened at 10, currently sit at 10 and a half, moving to half point there, but still a 7.07% edge towards LaSalle here in this game. And truly, it is a LaSalle team that has impressed me this season. They're very good on the offensive side of things, and I just have not been super excited with Loyola, Maryland. A little bit of a bigger spread, but I don't think LaSalle has any trouble covering it, taking them minus 10 and a half here against Loyola, Maryland. Now for this next game, we got Ball State taking on Detroit for Ball State coming into this game as the 110th overall team in the Heights of Power and King Detroit, the 354th overall team on the offensive side of things. Ball State gets the advantage here in this game, 74th overall, while Detroit the 258th overall team. Ball State also getting the edge defensively, 155th overall, Detroit the 360th overall team. And, you know, if you've watched the show at all this season, you probably saw this game coming here on today's card. Obviously, Obviously, the model really loves this Ball State team, has them very highly rated, um, you know, especially on the offensive side of things, but on the defensive side of things, too. Definitely higher than you're going to find really anywhere else in the country. But it is a LaSalle team that is obviously not a LaSalle team. I'm on the last game. It's a Ball State team. 
um that has been very impressive a couple of losses to evansville and little rock on the road which you know weren't the greatest of performances certainly um but have looked good at home in their wins and come off a game against bellarmine on saturday um where they did play extremely extremely well and you know it's a ball state team that just does a great job shooting the basketball 51.5 effective field goal percentage and 35 percent from beyond the arc not to mention both offensively and defensively they've done a really good job in the rebounding department and one thing that i really love about this ball state team on the defensive side of things is not a whole lot of unnecessary fouling do a really good job you know being um, a physical team but being a disciplined team at the same time and you know has allowed them to to be very competitive and, and look good in a lot of these games on the other side of things for detroit obviously don't have a win yet on the season now granted you gotta put a little bit of an asterisk there because the teams they've played have certainly been tough i mean eastern michigan maybe the only one on the schedule where you'd be like yeah that that, that potentially could have and maybe should have been a win um but they kept it within four in that one so a tough schedule and you gotta take a grain of salt certainly with a lot of detroit standings outside of that but even considering that they have struggled this year. They haven't done a good job shooting the basketball. Only a 48.6 effective field goal percentage. They're only hitting 29.8% from beyond the arc. And, you know, as poor as their shooting is, their shot defense has been even worse this season, not to mention in the rebounding department. They haven't looked great. They haven't looked great with the turnovers either. Again, have played a tough schedule. But at some point, we're going to have to see this Detroit team do something. And obviously, the model is going to love Ball State in this game just based on what we've seen from the model all season long 78.76 points for them Detroit at 66.17 a 12.59 spread in Ball State's favor here coming into this game and as far as the books have it once again way off from where the model has it for Ball State minus one and a half is where we opened and currently sit at a 25.34 percent edge towards Ball State here in this game um, once again one of the biggest edges of the day for this Ball State team and you know it, we've gone back and forth I think we're two and one at this point betting on ball state here this season um but truthfully it's a team that i think is very very undervalued by vegas and yeah well the, my model personally might overvalue them just a little bit they are a very dangerous team they're a strong shooting team um and they've really shown you know they can be very very competitive we've seen them struggle a little bit away from home certainly this will be a test to prove us right in this game but i think being such a short favorite in this game um it's a great opportunity for them i'm taking ball state minus one and a half here against detroit now we head to Logan, Utah for this next game as San Diego takes on Utah State for San Diego. Coming to this game is the 122nd overall team in the hot Tibet power ranking. Utah State is the 74th overall team on the offensive side of things. Utah State gets the advantage here in this game, 101st overall, while San Diego the 278th overall team. Defensively, though, it is San Diego with the advantage here, 40th overall. Utah State the 67th overall team here coming into this game and you know as far as utah state has gone this season um only one loss on the year and over loss or overtime loss to bradley on the road you know certainly a tough place to go into play and coming to this game following an impressive win over uc irvine last saturday and you know overall it's utah state team that has shot the ball well this season a 55.6 effective field goal percentage has struggled a bit from the perimeter only hitting 29.1 percent but on the defensive side of things utah state um, is equally an impressive team and has equally looked good here this season and you know as far as San Diego goes obviously the clear dog coming into this game but have still had you know relatively decent success this season six and three on the year um, you know a couple of decent wins and a couple of close games against better teams certainly Hawaii um, UC San Diego not the worst of losses in the world do come into this game though following a loss to Stanford on Sunday um, a game where you know they kind of got blown out in that one end up losing by 24 points and offensively speaking the shots have been an issue for this San Diego team certainly not the best shooting team in the world um, but they're very strong defensively their shot defense has looked very very good and actually in the model here get the edge over Utah State on the defensive end of the court not to mention it's a San Diego team that likes to get up and down the court plays a pretty fast tempo game um, likes to run in transition while you know Utah State likes to slow it down a bit more certainly an area that I think San Diego could use in their advantage here coming into this one but as far as the model goes does like Utah State at home 73.01 points for them San Diego at 64.63 an 8.38 spread in San Diego's or sorry in Utah State's favor here coming into this game but as far as the odds go for this one we opened at 15 and a half 
currently still sit at 15 and a half for Utah State, but found a 17 floating out there at Caesars um, for UC San Diego at the moment, a 15.42% edge towards you or not UC San Diego. Too many teams in San Diego, but this just the, the pure San Diego in this game, plus 17 um, here against Utah State. And that's exactly where I'm looking here for this game. I think the defense from San Diego has looked very, very strong this season. Um, I think we should see that on display once again. I think they keep it close and I think they cover this big spread. Taking San Diego plus 17 here against Utah State. Now we head to Morgantown for this next one, a rivalry game here. Pitt takes on West Virginia for Pitt. Coming to this game is the 27th overall team in the hot tip of power ranking. West Virginia is the 52nd overall team. On the offensive side of things, Pitt does have the pretty clear advantage in this game. 28th overall, West Virginia the 108th overall team. Defensively, though, it is two teams that are a little bit closer. Uh, West Virginia 28th, Pitt the 32nd overall team here coming into this game um, but both these teams while you know West Virginia maybe a little bit more have struggled this season Pitt hasn't you know looked tremendous in all of their games I mean do come into this game um, losing three of their last four now granted Florida Missouri Clemson all decently tough opponents didn't look absolutely terrible in those games um, you know maybe outside of the Florida one where they didn't look perfect but nonetheless it's a Pitt team that you know statistically has played very very well this season they shot the ball well they defended well um, they're a strong rebound rebounding team hard to find a ton of things to hate about this pit team other than the fact that they have struggled taking steps up in competition you know oregon state being their best victory of the season and, and certainly it's an oregon state team um you know that we've seen in their own right have some struggles here this year and as far as west virginia goes obviously the monmouth loss wasn't a great one they do open the season their best win being against missouri state um you know a decently close loss to virginia though another decently close loss on friday night in their last game to st john's but the true issue with this west virginia team and really the outlier in this game is their offense obviously have not done a great job shooting the basketball this season um you know truthfully one of the worst shooting teams and you know all the power five power six here this season but what west virginia can't do on the offensive end of the court they do make up for it a little bit defensively um you know i've had you know decent shot defense which has certainly kept them in some of these games and allowed them to stay competitive especially against teams that you know like to play a slower style of basketball albeit that's not exactly what Pitt's strategy is going to be here in this one but it's also a west virginia team that does a really good job of rebounding the ball as well and at home here in this game this is certainly a spot where I can see this West Virginia team showing up. And, and obviously, rivalry games are always going to be competitive. Um, and certainly, Pitt, West Virginia is one um, that is going to hold true to that statement. As far as the model goes here for this one, gives West Virginia the slight edge at home. 70.67 points for them. Pitt at 69.72. A 0 0.95 spread in West Virginia's favor here entering this game. Um, and as far as the odds go, really are moving in West Virginia's favor as we record this. We opened at 1.00. Um, you know, close to even odds there, plus three and a half, the current best line towards West Virginia. There are some two and a half floating out on the pit side. So kind of all over the place here with this one um, early on as we record, but an 8.66% edge towards West Virginia, plus three and a half um, at the moment. And, and yeah, it's a West Virginia team that we have seen, obviously have some struggles against some of these better teams this season, but the exact same thing can be said about Pitt. And while West Virginia maybe doesn't have the best shooting in the world and certainly a downside in this game, their defense has looked good. And at home in this rivalry game, I think it's a West Virginia team that we're going to see show up. I'm taking them plus three and a half here against Pitt. Now we head to Pullman for this next one as UC Riverside takes on Washington State for UC Riverside coming to this game as the 233rd overall team in the hot tub power ranking. Washington State is the 35th overall team on the offensive end of the court. Washington State has looked very good this season. 25th overall, UC Riverside the 325th overall team. Defensively a little bit closer. Washington State though still the advantage. 61st overall. Uh, Riverside, the 174th overall team coming into this one. And it is a Washington State team that has played, you know, tremendously well. Now, granted, um, don't have the toughest of strength of schedule in their only game against the top 100 team in Mississippi State. Um, did lose pretty handedly there on the road. But for the schedule they've played and the teams they've played, you know, haven't had a whole lot of close games and, you know, have really looked good, um, have shot the ball well, a 55.8 effective field goal percentage and 34.6% from beyond the arc. One area that I would love to see Washington State improve, though, is in the free throw department. And, and I'm truly hoping that one doesn't bite me here in this game because um, they have not been good. <laughs> but it is a Washington State team that defensively has been good, um, you know, across the board. And their shot defense certainly has looked good here this season. Um, and certainly UC Riverside isn't a huge step up in competition. 
by any means. And, and it was a UC Riverside team that we were on on Sunday against North Dakota. And while they did get the win in that game and you know, do have a win over Green Bay, it's a team that maybe outside of the UCLA game, um, we've seen struggle a little bit with some of these step up in competition. Don't get me wrong. A one point loss to UCLA is mightily impressive for Riverside here. But the loss to Utah, the loss to North Carolina didn't look the best in either one of those and certainly haven't shot the ball great this season. Only a 45.1 effective field goal percentage. They are hitting 33.3% from beyond the arc, but their shot defense hasn't been great. Um, one of the worst perimeter defenses in the country allowing 40.6 percent from beyond the arc and they're also giving up a 52.6 effective field goal percentage on the season so washington state is certainly gonna have the advantage in the shot department here and, and rightfully so i mean obviously washington state um you know there, there's there's levels to this thing certainly um and washington state has been a good team this season as far as the model goes washington state 79.28 points projected for them uc riverside at 59.28 um minus 20 is the projected spread here always love to see those exact numbers um coming through and as far as the odds go from the books 13 and a half is where we opened do have a 14 and a half actually here for uc riverside but the current odds both sitting at 13 and a half um, on both sides of this one, a 10.64% edge towards Washington State here entering this game, um, which, you know, is a decently high spread, certainly not a, a small spread by any means, but it is a Washington State team that has done a good job beating a lot of bad teams by a lot of points. And yeah, well, they didn't look great in Mississippi State in their you know toughest game. This isn't exactly, you know, a, a tough, tough opponent. They've shot the ball well, they've defended well, and they're just a really good team at home. Taking Washington State minus 13 and a half here against UC Riverside. And we stay out west here for this last game as Cal State Fullerton takes on Pepperdine for Cal State Fullerton. Coming to this game is the 251st overall team in the hot tip power ranking. Pepperdine, the 196th overall team on the offensive side of things. Pepperdine gets the advantage in this one, 120th overall, while Fullerton, the 244th overall team. Defensively, though, Fullerton actually the slight advantage here, 245th overall, while Pepperdine, the 272nd overall team entering this game and you know overall both these teams have had their fair share of struggles this season now for pepperdine have played a tough tough schedule um you know colorado new mexico indiana state uc irvine not exactly the easiest opponents i mean even unlv in there as well um and you know in the games at home against quote-unquote cupcakes we'll just say easier opponents maybe not cupcakes at this level um they have looked good they've won and, and you know done it in impressive fashion and even in their losses haven't been terrible to a certain extent, I mean, you got to give them some credit at least. And they've shot the ball well. You know, if there's one area for this Pepperdine team that we can say they have played well, it's in the shooting department. A 51.6 effective field goal percentage, and they're hitting 38.2% from beyond the arc. Now, the shot defense hasn't necessarily been the best. They are good in the rebounding department. Um, but defensively for Fullerton, you know, their shooting hasn't, or shot defense hasn't been the best either. But more specifically for Cal State Fullerton, their shot selection and, you know, overall shot production hasn't been great. Only a 44.7 effective field goal percentage on the year, and they're only hitting 26.7% from beyond the arc. Now, granted, Fullerton has played, you know, a tough opponent as well. San Diego State, UCF, Nebraska in there as well. Um, I mean, even Cornell obviously the Ivy League has been good this season um, but truly I think the edge in this game is going to be that Pepperdine offense and especially at home I think it gives them a pretty sizable advantage coming into this game just with how both these defenses have played as far as the model goes for this one likes Pepperdine at home 77.16 points for them Cal State Fullerton at 70.16 another one that's right on the money here minus seven towards Pepperdine um, is where the model has it at. And as far as the books have it, opened at three. Um, sit at three for Fullerton on the dog side, but a minus two and a half, the best for Pepperdine at the moment. A 7.62% edge for Pepperdine coming into this game. And truly, like I was saying, it's going to be the offense for Pepperdine. If they can shoot the ball well, um, you know, it's two defenses that quite honestly just haven't been there this season. And in the Fullerton offense, I don't think it's going to be able to keep up when Pepperdine is shooting their best. Taking Pepperdine, minus two and a half. Here against Cal State Fullerton to do it here for wednesday's show and if you want to see more sports betting action for everything going on today head over to hot to take a look at the computer model picks up there you can check out all the college basketball matchups for today the nba the nhl as well college football in the nfl obviously entering bowl season 
um, the NFL, you know, coming down to the wire here. Uh, UFC horse racing up on the website as well. So take a look at all of that today. Also, follow the social links down below Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter to stay up to date with everything that's getting posted over there. As well as if you're watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads. And most importantly, drop a comment down below. Let me know who you guys are betting on here for today's card. And thank you so much for watching today's show. I will see you guys tomorrow.